Imagine if the only people in the world allowed to have children were Olympic athletes. Imagine if the rules to be human meant that Usain Bolt could only make babies with people like him, other exceptionally talented athletes. What would the next generation look like? Well, there would probably be a larger proportion of elite athletes, but some of the children may not have inherited the ability to run fast. Now, what if only the children that did inherit athletic talent were allowed to reproduce? Then in the next generation, that is the grandchildren of the Usain Bolts and their exceptionally talented athletic wives, there would probably be an even greater proportion of children with the genetic potential to run fast. Thankfully, such a scenario could never exist, but in domestic animal populations it does. In racehorses, for example, intense selection by humans for speed has led very quickly to a large proportion of the population being fast. All modern day thoroughbreds can trace their ancestry to one of just three stallions and one of about 50 mares that were registered in the general stud book that was first published in 1791. And some of these horses may have lived 100 years or so earlier than that. So for over 300 years, thoroughbred racehorses have been selected by breeders for superior athletic traits leading to a remarkable concentration of the horse's genetic attributes for athleticism and speed. We can see this in the extreme anatomical, physiological and metabolic characteristics that are particular to horses. One of these traits is an unusually high maximal aerobic capacity. One way we can measure this is by evaluating something that we call VO2 max or the maximal rate of oxygen consumption. When adjusted for size, thoroughbred horses have a VO2 max almost three times that of Olympic sprint athletes. In absolute terms, what this means is that during a race, a thoroughbred is consuming up to 100 litres of oxygen per minute, compared to Usain Bolt's seven litres. Also, horses can rapidly increase their VO2 max by up to 25%, within just a matter of a few weeks of training. If only it were that easy. The high VO2 max of thoroughbreds is a result of a number of key adaptations, including a massive lung capacity, a large heart, and a particularly unusual feature of horses is the ability to release an additional 50% more red blood cells from the spleen on anticipation of or at the onset of exercise. And this further enhances the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Illegal blood doping among human athletes is an attempt to artificially mimic this natural blood boosting effect that is unique to horses. So as a result, racehorses can reach top speeds of about 65 kilometers an hour and can maintain that speed over distances of a mile to a mile and a half for up to two minutes. The interesting thing about thoroughbreds too is that they rarely get fat. Even those that are not exercised don't get fat. They don't tend to suffer from obesity in the same way that some smaller ponies do. So why is this? What is it that thoroughbreds have that I don't have? Last year, uh, I had the great honor of uh, meeting Queen Elizabeth on her state visit here as part of a group of scientists. We all lined up and we had to present ourselves and our, and our work. I'm curing cancer, said one. Very interesting, said Her Majesty. I'm finding ways to combat malaria to stop small babies in Africa dying, said another. Oh, very interesting, she said. I'm preventing early onset diabetes in children. Very interesting. I'm trying to understand how the immune system can combat cancer. Very interesting. And then it came to me, I'm finding fast genes in racehorses, I said. And she replied, now that is useful. <laughs> My research is focused on understanding the genetic contributions to elite athleticism in racehorses. If we can characterize the genetic contributions to exercise by linking the physical adaptations to variation in the three billion letters of the genetic code, then we can develop genetic tests that will greatly assist selection decisions. Which of the next generation of horses 
will be the best athletes? Which of these horses should be allowed to breed? With this knowledge, we're armed to identify those horses with the greatest genetic potential for race course success, even before they've had a saddle on their back. Of course, it's not all genetics. Genetics is just part of the puzzle. How a horse is managed and trained and a lot of luck on the day all contribute to um, race course success. Notwithstanding this, the genetic information may be applied to improving selection decisions and we're already doing this in my company, Equinome. We may not make horses faster, but we can identify those with the greatest chance of success and over time this will result in a population of faster horses. It's not just about providing this information for kings, queens and noble men with horses. Importantly, if thoroughbreds have been selected for exercise-related genes and they tend not to get fat, then maybe those genes could be important in humans in the prevention of obesity and related metabolic disease. Now that is useful. We don't need to produce a generation of Olympic athletes to uncover these genes. We already have an exceptionally refined model in the horse. And in this country where the thoroughbred industry punches far above its weight in the global context, continually producing world-class racehorses, we have the perfect opportunity to do this. I think it was another queen who once said, every fool knows that one horse can run faster than another. Most people want to know which one. And of course, I'd love to be able to identify the next Derby winner, but most of all, I just want to understand why it is that some horses are better racehorses than others.